just a quick recap of what we've learned so far. We learned there's a difference between qualitative variables and quantitative variables. Qualitative are more like categories where you can't do meaningful calculations, and quantitative are numbers where you can do meaningful calculations. Remember, zip codes and stuff don't fall into that. Um, they fall into qualitative. And then um, we have quantitative being so important that we split it up two ways into discrete and continuous and again the reason for this is because we can do different things with discrete variables versus continuous variables discrete variables are counted or countable they can be infinite but you have to be able to count one two three four continuous variables is it could be anything on the scale as long as you could just get a finer tuned measurement you could get more um decimal places, if you will. So for example, if you're thinking about weight, weight is continuous because, you know, even though you get on the scale, it says, you know, 110, it's really 110.2365. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to separate it out one again in a different way. So these kind of go together, the whole discrete and continuous quantitative qualitative, but we're going to try a different thing. We're going to talk about levels of measurement because different levels of measurement are better than others. So the worst level of measurement is the nominal level of measurement. That's when you can just categorize the data and label it, but you can't really arrange it in a ranked order. You can arrange it in alphabetical order, and that's cool. Um, zip codes would fall into this too. You can arrange in numeric order, but again, it's not ranked. It's not like people that have a zip code of 49201 are better than people that have a zip code of 49202. That doesn't work that way. So there's no ranking. Now, ordinal is when you can do the same thing. You can arrange them and label them and everything, but you can put them in a ranked order. Think like gold, silver, bronze in the Olympics. You know gold is better than silver, but you don't know by how much. That's ordinal. Okay. Now, interval. Um, interval is ranked. You can put it in order and all that stuff, but it has scale units. In other words, it's numbers. I and mean, when you're looking at numbers, you're really more or less looking at the bottom two. Some can argue a little bit for ordinal, but not much. So if you're, if you're doing something that involves scale units, that means that there is a difference between three and four, and that difference is the same difference between 19 and 20, right? It's a difference of one, right? And we know what that is. So a three-year-old to a four-year-old, you know that's a difference of one. A 19-year-old to a 20-year-old, that's a difference of one. You have scale units. And you can have negatives. Now, negatives are a little bit funky. So mathematically, we like to know when they can pop up. And they can pop up with interval level of measurement. Okay. Then what about ratio? Ratio is the best. So this goes from worst to to best. So the worst one's nominal, the next one's ordinal, the second best one is interval, and the very, very, very best one, the one we like the best, the one we like to work with the best, is ratio. It cannot have negative values. It, it is, um, you can put it in order, it has scale units, it can be ranked, all that good stuff. Um, but it cannot be negative, right? That's the big difference between these two. So when you're looking at numbers, generally it's one of these two. Numbers that can be negative fall into interval. Numbers that cannot be negative are ratio. Okay, so um, we have a little diagram here to kind of help you figure it out. So qualitative data. Qualitative data follows into either nominal or ordinal. So for example, your name is nominal. Your social security number is nominal. Your zip code is nominal, right? All of that is nominal stuff. Now, qualitative ordinal, that would be their words, their qualities, but I can order them. So your service rating that I talked to you about back here, the service rating of care, so poor, fair, good, excellent, that kind of thing, that is qualitative because they're words, but it's ordinal because you know that excellent is considered better than poor, okay? Gold, silver, bronze is the same thing. Gold medal, silver medal, bronze medal. That's ordinal. Okay, blue ribbon, red ribbon, things like that. Okay, so now what about quantitative? Well, you can see mathematically, quantitative is a lot more interesting, which is why quantitative's got a lot more stuff going on here. So let's start with quantitative, discrete, but ordinal. This is kind of a gray area. There are a lot of statisticians that argue that this doesn't really exist. And again, I don't want to get into it too much because I basically agree with them, but for our purposes and um, for the sake of dealing with 
um, the numbers that we're going to see in real life, these are treated like they're quantitative discrete a lot, which is when people do Likert scale, um, Likert scale. So they say, you know, my pain level is at three, my pain level is at five, things like that. That is for all intents and purposes treated like it's quantitative discrete and ordinal. Now, whether that's a fair treatment or not, it's not, um, is not something we're not going to get into too, too much, but um, just suffice it to say that our purpose is we're going to treat it like it's quantitative discrete and ordinal. We will let other people argue about whether that's a valid point to make because it's not valid, but a lot of people do it anyway. So we're going to talk about it as if it's going to happen because it's going to happen. All right, next. Um, oh, and by the way, the same issue comes up with um, like ratemyprofessor.com. They'll say rate your professor on level of easiness, you know, one, two, three, four, or five. It's the same idea. I mean, how much better is a five than a four? You don't really know. So that's, it's a little bit weird to talk about it as if it's quantitative discrete when you don't really know the difference. But same thing kind of with dress sizes, shoe sizes. I mean, that, that would kind of count in there as well because you know there's a difference, but you don't really know what they are. It's, it's kind of yeah, a gray area. So um, now interval would be it can have negatives. So the year you're born is interval. I know it sounds crazy, but remember that you can have negative years. Negative years is what BCE is all about, right? So the whole before the common era, that is, oops, hold on, I'm using my thing here. BCE, before the common era or before Christ is what it used to be, but actually it used to be BCE and then they changed it to BCE and now they're switching back to BCE, you know, whatever. Um, it's, that is negative, like negative one would be one BC, negative two would be two BC, negative 30 would be 30 BC, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, ratio is your age rounded to the nearest year. That's discrete. Now, age in general is continuous. If you remember in the last video, your age is constantly changing because you're getting older and older and older and older every second. That's be morbid. But in general, we round it. You don't say, hey, I'm 20 years and three months and two days. You don't say that. You say I'm 20 years old. You round it. So if you consider rounded age, when it's rounded, that is discrete because you've rounded it and it's ratio because you can't be negative. You can't go back in time before you were born. Okay. So your age rounded to the nearest year, that is ratio. Okay. Now continuous, lots of things are continuous. Body temperature, blood pressure, weight, that's all, um, oh, excuse me. Yeah. Those, all of those things are continuous now, but not all of them are interval. Interval are the ones that can be negative. So for example, your body temperature, that can go, well, technically your body temperature can't go negative, but temperature in general can go negative, right? That's what negative two degrees, negative three degrees. We hit it every winter in Michigan, right? Your weight, on the other hand, can't be negative. So weight is ratio. So again, can be negative is interval, cannot be negative is ratio. So year you were born, Years in general, calendar years, 2095, 102, years in history class, that's interval. The age that you are rounded to the nearest year, that is ratio. Okay, Your body temperature is interval. Tem temperature in general is ne can be negative. Um, your weight, on the other hand, cannot be negative. Okay. Another way you could put it to yourself this way would be um, body temperature is one. What about your weight loss or gain, right? I've lost five pounds. That'd be negative five. I've gained five pounds. That'd be positive five, right? So that's another example of that, okay? And let me give you another example of the other one. One second. Um, the classic example, um, oh, that's... Mm would be like um, difference in your dollar amounts or difference in um, the money you pay or something like that. Pay rates or pain levels or, ooh, how about difference in ages between spouses or something like that. That could be negative. Let's say like if the man is older, that's positive. If the woman is older, that's negative. That would work, right? It'd be rounded ages, but it would work, right? So that would be interval and discrete. 
right? So the difference in that happens a lot. Profit is another one. Profit usually falls down here though, but profit, um, I've gone up $10, that's positive 10. If I've gone down $10, that's negative 10. Okay, so can be negative as interval, cannot be negative as ratio. Other than that, those two are basically the big number ones. Um, and the nominal and ordinal tends to be more of the qualitative stuff. The only exa um, exception to that is this one, which is quite frankly controversial amongst many statisticians anyway. All right, we're done with section 1.1. I'll see you back here for more videos.